Well, it turns out D3 Publisher wasn't done, folks. They just had to make more snowboarding games. In fact, this is the sequel for snowboarding for the PlayStation 1. Snowboarder Racer 2 for the PlayStation 2 was only released in Japan and Europe. Gee, I wonder why. Well, surprisingly, unlike the first game, this wasn't... this one isn't that bad? Okay, hear me out. I know you're thinking, this guy is on crack, to which I was spawned with. I wish I was. Maybe then my sanity would come back after playing or reviewing tons of shitty games for the last three months straight. Yeah, notice that? I had a review every single day from Halloween 2023 to today. I have no life indeed. So we'll break this video down into a few sections since there's actually a decent amount to talk about. We'll start with the controls. Unlike the first game, this one controls way better. Not SSX good, but decent enough. You use the D-pad or left analog stick for movement, and this time, I do recommend the analog stick. The PS2 era is when the D-pad was used for other things and became redundant in movement controls. It just plays much better with the analog stick. The X button is to jump, circle for quick turns, square for break. You can then use the four face buttons while in the air for tricks. But of course, this isn't SSX, so don't go expecting flips and turns and all that dazzleness. Instead, it's just basic forgettable stuff that your 98 year old boomer grandma could pull off. Next, we can talk about the characters. There's four this time. Progress! With a new console generation, they were able to add one single new character. Can't wait for the PS3 for another one! You can swap their outfits if you unlock them, and change the color from one of two options. Also, there's no black guy this time, just two whites and two Asians. Uh oh, don't let Kotaku know about this game. So, after that, you may want to know, did they add new locations? No, it's still the same old exact snowy mountain, just with better graphics. No, seriously, it's the same damn level, just in PS2 era graphics instead of PS1 era graphics. But hey, there's four game modes now, instead of two. I expect solid. We'll start with the traditional race. Now you can race against CPUs or another player instead of just by yourself. So it's you and two others racing to the bottom. I learned the hard way how the game controls here and got third place, but it's fun having someone to race against instead of it being empty. Also, the music actually works in the game. Like holy cow, the game actually has music unlike the first. Color me impressed. And the music itself is decent. Well, it's not good as SSX Tricky, it's... it's passable. Next up is Trick Mode, where you must race to the bottom of the mountain while getting the most points. This is where I learned how to perform the four basic tricks of the game. With all the high jumps and curved walls, I was bouncing all over the place, raking up points. This mode was a lot of fun. The music helps as there's a few tracks to pick from, and the energy it brought with it helped make this mode entertain more entertaining. However, the tricks are very basic, just like the first game, so don't go in expecting anything spectacular. So. It's a very, very basic, so that does suck. Now we could talk about Halfpipe. 
here it's just you or another player and you where you go down a narrow path and jump around pulling off tricks to score as many points as possible before you reach the bottom. Here it's harder because there's less room and it's shorter. Therefore you must pull off tricks more precise to come out on top. It's not bad and the fact that it's a short burst mode for those who just want a quick game experience is a nice addition. The more variety the better I say. Last but not least is Crash. Here you must crash into the snowman snowboarder and take out all his hearts to win. If you can make it to the bottom before all the hearts are gone, you lose. I only got a single hit on the guy because he's fast and avoids you easily. If you catch up to him, you can just slow down out of nowhere so you can't hit him. Good god is this mode a challenge. I welcome it though. And if you ever wanted to go snowboarding and beat the crap out of Frosty the Snowman, well, here you go. At the end of the day, that's all the game has to offer. It's a decent improvement over the first game. The music works, there's a good amount of modes, and there's more options for customization. But it's still a bit jank and lacking in some areas that they could have improved more in, such as tricks being too simple and basic, the controls needed some refining, and there needed to be at least two levels of snowboard instead of just one. Nonetheless, it's an average game worth checking out, to which I'm shocked at just as much as you. After all the torture and bitching, of the simple series being awful, we found something decent. Anyways, that's it for this video. Tomorrow, you're in for a treat. For the 100th day in a row, I'm reviewing a classic gem in celebration of milestone achievement. Be there or be square.